Hello fellow humans and welcome to the Madhouse. I'm Josh and today is Wednesday so it's time for Top 5 Wednesday. Today's topic is one that I'm quite excited about because it's one I've been thinking about for weeks anyway before I even found out what the this was. Because there's one of these that I am incredibly excited about and would happily kill for. Having said that, I would probably kill for fun as well so probably shouldn't have said that out loud should I? Top 5 Wednesday was of course created by Lainey of Ginger Eats Lainey. She's a really good booktuber person thing. That wasn't the right word for it. She's very good. Go and check out her channel and I'll put a link to the Goodreads group as well if you want to join in and do this yourself. The topic is, as I'm sure you've noticed then, side characters who deserve a series of their own. And at number 5 there comes Dustfinger from the Inkheart series. And I'm cheating a little bit with this one because I don't really want to read a series with Dustfinger in it. What I want to read is the Inkheart book written by Fenolio within this book. The one where Inkheart the one where Dustfinger happens to be the protagonist. So it would be one about Dustfinger. That world is fascinating as we see in the other series. So I would quite like to see the narrative direction that Funka had in mind when she came up with the idea in the first place. I mean it's not an entirely, it's not impossible that we could see that sort of thing because for example take Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I've not read it but I've heard lots of people talk about it and it's about someone who's fangirling over this particular work of fiction and about one of the characters in particular. And now Rainbow Rowell, that is a, has to be a pseudonym, I hope it is, is writing the work that is fangirled over as another book or may have written it, I don't know. But it it is or will be written and I hope for the same for this one. Number four then is one that should be pretty interesting to see. China Sorrows from the School of Pleasant series. From the very beginning, she's a very interesting character, an enigmatic um, woman with a hell of a lot of power, both magical and political. She is centuries old, like all of the sorcerers, admittedly, but she's used it to garner influence and to collect magical items, artifacts, and books in a colossal library. She has the magical world wrapped around her tattooed fingers. And it's not just her fingers that are tattooed, but her entire body is covered in magical symbols that she uses to channel her power. Her past is incredibly dark, especially in some of the later books you find out a little bit more. And she is really mysterious. I would love to find out something more from her perspective. On a similar vein to China, there is at number three, Angela from The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Powley. It's a rather good series and of course the books are always stunning but Angela is a bit of a mystery. She is a witch who doesn't actually do any visible magic. She is extremely competent um, in fighting with her double bladed staff whatever you call it. She's a fortune teller who can actually see the future and she's centuries old despite there being no reason given for this. She's not an elf, she's not a dragon rider, she's not part elf. We don't know how she's that, that old. She attributes it to eating her herbs when times are poor. But there has to be more to it than that because if there was just a collection of herbs that could make everyone immortal, they would have done it. On top of that, she hangs around with a werecat of all creatures, something very powerful on its own that only hangs around important people and events. She herself is always at the centre of any action whenever something important happens she is there to investigate, maybe persuade and advise and somehow she has managed to come into the possession of a sword that can cut through everything including diamond except its hilt. Now such swords are not entirely uncommon in the fantasy genre but the fact that she managed to get hold of one while being a fairly I'm not sure what word I'm looking for. Fairly unlike the typical hero who pulls the sword from the stone or from the dragon's lair. I want to know exactly who and what she is. At number two then are the Dane twins from A Darker Shade of Magic. They are the twin monarchs of White London, Astrid and I want to say Electo but I think that's the Caros in Harry Potter. No, um, Athos I think. Two of my favourite sorts of characters and in fact they break the trope a little bit of 
sibling monarchs because most of the time one of them is trying to off the other. But in this one, no, they rule together and neither one wants to get rid of the other one. They are better and stronger when they are together. Instead of trying to off each other, they spent the time scheming, plotting, controlling and being generally cruel conniving bosses to the rest of the world. They managed to take control of White London, a world which is notoriously difficult to control and hold on to that position for 10 years or more I'm not sure exactly I think it was 10 so they are incredibly interesting and okay sure they were actually beaten fairly easily but I'm hoping that we haven't seen the last of them I want to find out more about their history their childhood how they came to be where they were how they rose to power we know a little bit about that but nowhere near as much as I would like at number one then is one I think everyone was expecting. It had to be someone from the Harry Potter series and I was seriously tempted to say I want a book about Harpo the Fowl. Harpo the Fowl being the ancient Greek wizard who invented Horcruxes and created the first basilisk. Very nasty wizard. Or I'd also like to read something more about the origin of the Dementors, how they came to be in Azkaban. Some really foul things there. But no, I have decided I want a book about Dumbledore, about Dumbledore and Grindelwald, from the time they first met right up until their final encounter. I want to hear about how they became such um, friends, about Dumbledore's infatuation with Grindelwald and his unrequited love, or is it unrequited? I'm not sure how to pronounce that word. I want to find out how they started to grow apart, how they ended up duelling. I mean, that duel was supposed to have been phenomenal because both Aberforth, Dumbledore and Grindelwald, all of them exceptionally, exceptionally powerful and all of them very gifted, Aberforth less so than the other two but still dangerous enough on his own. It would be a truly fantastic fight and then of course I would like to read about Grindelwald's uprising, his bid to take over, his, his, the construction of his army, what he did at Durmstrang and then that final duel in 1945 when Dumbledore beat him because that must have been a rather formidable battle because both of them so exceptionally gifted and powerful yet Grindelwald being the master of the Elder Wand and Dumbledore still managed to beat him there has to be a reason for it and I would love to see it and that's it for today I hope you enjoyed the video please click like and subscribe and share and all of that stuff let me know what you thought do you think any of those characters deserve to have the series of their own do you think i'm crazy as most people tend to do or do you have any suggestions of your own seriously i recommend that you give this top five wednesday thing a try i'm thinking of stopping it and swapping it for something else because i've had so many ideas of late that I, and i can't film them all in a week or at least i possibly could but i take a very long time to edit something while my mind's on it i'll mention a little something from harry potter to end it Nitwit Oddment Blubber Squeak. Four wonderful words, don't you think? I really need to work on my old man voice for Dumbledore. Anyway, have a nice day and I will see you probably on Friday. Or I'll pretend to see you and I'll just stare at my camera lens pretending you're there. That'll do now. I have to go and start on lasagna. Goodbye.